Welcome back, Plug Nation. Today, we got some great information. You already know, I don't like waste any time. So whatever you gotta do, make sure that like button is blue. Hit that subscribe button if you're new, and let's get right into the news. So Solo said, are you excited for NBA 2K23? I want you guys to chime in and let me know in the comment section how you're feeling about 2K23 right now. Are you excited for the game? Are you going to be buying it right away? Waiting till Christmas? Let me know how you feel about it. I told you I'll read every single comment, so trust me, there's a reason why I'm asking. I really want to see how you guys are feeling about 2K23. In my honest opinion, I'm kind of anxious about the game because we only know a little bit, but we also know a lot at the same time. There's going to be a cruise ship again. There's going to be a city again is it going to be the same cruise ship in city we don't know that's a big one that i'm anxious about and at the same time if you've seen the last video we finally have hands-on gameplay impressions from some people that got flew out to play nba 2k 23 early but the gameplay impressions is from just play now and most likely the play now demo was on rookie or pro so we have to take everything with a grain of salt and be like okay the demo was probably played on rookie or pro and can be much different when we get to the park and have a custom jump shot with the fastest speed fastest dribble moves best dunk packages and all that stuff so we can't really take that as 100 percent until we actually get the game plus as you all know 2k changes the game a lot in like the first month and then it's pretty much the same for the rest of the year but anyway back in doc said been almost two years ps5 should be available everywhere and not at a ridiculous price as you see that has 120,000 likes that means people are agreeing your perspective might be different but i've still to this day never seen a ps5 in a store i've also never seen an xbox series x so maybe in your location you have but from what i'm getting most people have still not been able to get a next gen console because they're simply not in stores and the casual gamer you might be a casual gamer that has a next gen console but most casual gamers which it's completely fine to be a casual by the way does not want to get a next gen system off a reseller off facebook marketplace all that stuff they don't want to get no best buy exclusive 200 dollars whatever to be able to get a chance to get the playstation they don't want to buy it off stock x they want to go into a store and get their system they don't want to pay resell nothing like that so it's unfortunately going to be another year where the 2k community is very split i do believe more and more people are starting to get next gen you know as the days go but i still believe it's probably going to be about 60 percent on current gen next year and 40 percent on next which is good more and more people are getting the consoles i would say this year was about 75 to 70 percent were on current and about 30 to 35 percent were on next gen so we're getting there we're going but it's still going to be another year of division hopefully 2k24 we are back finally on one game i do believe 2k should finally make one game next year they should have enough time by next year to have gotten a console anyway dbg said if they patch everything in 2k23 to appease park players at the detriment of every other mode like they had the past two years i will have given up hope on 2k ever being a good experience for 5v5 modes at a high level jay abersford said they haven't appeased park players the last two years park gameplay been horrible the last two years what are you talking about so i'm not huge into my team anymore for those of you that are super ogs i used to play my team before park that was my thing i played my team way more than i played park but anyway what i'm trying to get to is this year i went and played some competitive pro-am and i loved it the only issue is it's very hard to get five good people together to play every single night and it would just make me pull my hair out it's hard enough to find one freaking teammate to play 2k especially now but anyway what i'm trying to say is i noticed right away in my experience that you could tell as soon as you touch that pro-am the game was made for 5v5 it changed my perspective on the game yeah twos is going to be a lot of cheese because it's two people on a gigantic court threes is going to be cheese because it's only three people on a court 5v5 you can tell that's what the game is made for and as you guys know that i've been watching closely i also played another type of 5v5 which was played now online i challenge you guys to try this as well by the way and got up to the greatest of all time once you get in them high levels man you're starting to play a lot of sweats but what i'm trying to say is i played two different 5v5s and i can tell the game was made for 5v5 now i haven't played my team of course but i will say that the game definitely seems like it was more made from 5v5 than it was park which is understandable because i would say that's where most people play 2k like park is basically the only mode that's not 5v5 like triple threat in my team and stuff but you know what i'm saying anyway we have 2k that said you can sign this pack without affecting your cap space claim the first prime gaming 2k22 pack now to get a season six my team pack a season six in season eight i caught that and was like what is going on right here seasons we are in season eight 2k but i don't know i just wanted to put that on there because it just seems like 2k sometimes is really out of touch power said i just want to hear about the 23 build and level system then i'll know 
So we know it's probably, you know, similar to the same cruise ship, probably similar to the same city. We will see, but we still don't know what the build system and the level system is going to look like. Like, yes, we do know that seasons are back in the game, but it could be different. We don't know. I'm not saying 2K is going to change it, but they could alter it slightly to make it better. We are not sure yet. That's up to 2K. Now, we also don't know if they're going to slide in a legend grind as well. Because, you know, 2K, they're very good at marketing. You can say whatever you want. 2K is very good at marketing their game before it comes out. They would probably tell us that right around, you know, the park news starting to come out in like late August, like mid-August, somewhere around there. Anyway, Wadgeplug went to Twitter and said, NBA 2K23 needs a legend grind that doesn't give you a parrot. So there technically was a legend this year, but it gave you a parrot. So no one even talks about that. I'm not even counting there being a legend grind in this game. I don't care what you say. There was not a legend grind in this game. I'm telling you, if people knew if we were somehow able to go to an alternate universe and people knew before they got those four stars to hit legend that they were going to get a parrot, the numbers of people hitting legend would dramatically go down in season four in this alternate universe. I promise you that's how it would be. No one knew we were getting a parrot. But anyway, there has to be good rewards. Even if there is no legend grind next year, 2K, please, for the season grind, there was like one or two good seasons for sure. Make every season have an incentive for you to get on and play 2K. Speaking of that, Luck went to Twitter and said, NBA 2K23 needs to hurry I'm bored AF. 2K22 feels so pointless to play with the horrible season and 2K23 being so close. And that tweet goes exactly with what I'm saying. Imagine right now you were able to get like plus three attributes this season for hitting level 40 on your player or plus two, something like that. So if you have an 82 driving dunk, you now have an 84 and you're able to get contact dunk packages. Now, of course, this year, if you put on like if you have an 83 driving dunk and you put on the plus one uh, driving dunk arm sleeve, it doesn't unlock the animation. So 2K would have to change that but let's say that came out and it was able to make your builds unlock new animations and stuff people would be grinding the game i got on the other day hopped on loaded up and i was like what am i doing like i've already played the game for 10 months that is the thing like yes gameplay is very important especially for the first you know two three four months something like that but after that there's got to be something now this is in my opinion yours could be different just realize that people have different opinions but in my opinion there's got to be something to make you want to get back on and play the game that's how i've always loved every game pretty much that i play so your perspective might be different but i know that a lot of people can agree with me that at some point gameplay gets boring depending on how good or bad the gameplay is especially like we've had some bad 2ks but since there was stuff to earn you still wanted to play the game you see what i'm saying so could be different for you guys and at the same time like i've said there has to be stuff even though i'm not a part of this i want to stick up for you guys there's got to be something that the rec players can get pro-am players stage players because a lot of these things you unlock this year they can't even use so that's got to change in 2k23 anyway luck said in nba 2k23 instead of 2k doing a two-week ban then you get unbanned and keep your stuff you cheated slash boosted for they need to start doing longer bans than reset what they boosted for getting banned for two weeks then getting unbanned and keeping what you cheated for is no punishment and i've actually never thought of it that way like yeah you know how I've always talked about the events where, yes, I do want Gold Rush back and Ruffles and all these tournaments with the leaderboards, but if 2K is not going to ban people, I really would care less to see them because people that cheat are almost the only people that win those events. So yes, they should ban them and take their rewards. GV said, I always thought them keeping their level and everything was weird. Lux said, 100%. They'll get banned and then come to my chat and say, just got banned. I don't care though. It's only two weeks and I get unbanned and keep my stuff. Never understood the point of 2K doing that system. So I personally don't care about someone boosting for level. Like if you're boosting this year to hit level 40, I honestly don't care. I'll literally walk right by the court and go, oh, that guy's boosting and then go on with my day like that doesn't really it doesn't do anything to me right it doesn't bother me do what you want to do obviously you are at the risk of getting banned but especially if you cheat in an event and take someone's hard-earned legit playing take their rewards away from them you should not only get banned and reset but you shouldn't keep the rewards that you got like if i'm in 11th place and let's say ruffles and I miss out because 10th place was cheating and he gets banned. They should take away his stuff and give it to me, the guy that played legit. So 
I do want to see all these events back in the game, but only if 2K is really going to punish people that are boosting so that they know if I'm going into this event and I'm boosting, I'm not making it out. So there's no reason to boost. You see what I'm saying? If you just enforce it, people are going to know. If there's fear, they're going to not want to do what they have been doing. So look, I do want to see those events back, but if they're not going to, and 95% of the people winning these events are taking away rewards from people playing legit, I'd rather see events like we have this year. I know that could be an unpopular opinion, but I'd rather see Power Up and all the cool events that they've had this year that are just like a fun experience, not sweating to win every game in a four hour window and then still losing to boosters. So if they don't do that, I'd rather see Power Up, Fire and Ice, those type of things, because those were fire. Like, unless you didn't play them, you would probably say that they were fun. And if you didn't, you're probably just like, oh, too 22 is trash so the event was trash but if you know what i'm talking about there was actually a few definitely good events like fire and ice is one of my favorite events of all time in 2k it was a fun experience you only had to play one game to get the experience you didn't have to play the whole four hours win every single game and then lose to boosters you see what i'm saying anyway click one of these two videos right here you know you want to it's your boy badge plug you've been plugged in make sure to drop a like if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button if you're new and as you guys know as soon as all the 2k 23 news comes out again it's gonna be right here on this channel you don't have to search hours through facebook twitter instagram you literally can turn on notifications and click one button when the notification pops up and see everything that you need to see i'm out peace